Back here on Radio Row, Darren McFarland, Brad Hopkins, Derek Mason with you. Our coverage all week brought to you by the folks at Low T Center of Nashville. This man, our next guest at the table, knows all about Nashville. Titans defensive end Cameron Wembley here with us. Cameron, how you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. So when did you roll into town? Hey, I just got in this morning. I'm, I'm fresh off the jet, came straight here. And you're, you're staying until when? I will be leaving right before the Super Bowl. Good move on your part. Whoever did that, smart. Hey, I'll land in time say, to watch it. You didn't hear him say, I'm fresh off the jet. Yes, Ooh, nice. No, it was, it was commercial with everybody else. Nothing special. <laughs> oh, you mean you didn't fly Mace Air? <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm, I get my ticket through orbits. <laughs> Let's talk a little Titans here before we start talking about the, the grand stage that we are uh, here for, Super Bowl 48. Mm-hmm. You know, just talk about the difficulties of last season, especially when you have the leader of your offense go down. Uh, you have to make changes on the run. We know in an NFL season through 17 weeks is about adjustments. Mm-hmm. But just talk about how you guys, how you thought you fared, even though you had a little bit of an uphill battle through a lot of the season last year. Well, there's a lot of variables. I think, like you mentioned, we started off good. I think Jake did a great job uh, managing the game and, and making good plays and putting us in position to win. I think we started out, what, 3-1, and one, and mm-hmm. we just uh, went downhill from there after he got injured. Um, I think there were still some big moments in there uh, with Fitzpatrick. Um, in some games, I just think we had too many turnovers, though we couldn't overcome it. Um, this year, defensive-wise, I think we made some improvements. I don't, I don't think we're still where we want to be, but I think we made some, some improvements. Um, I know with probably with our offense, a lot of people put a lot of pressure uh, on the offensive line this year um, and had great expectations, you know, for C.J. to probably hit another 2,000-yard 2000, 2000 year. But, um, I mean, he, he still hit 1,000. I mean, not, not a lot of running backs are even doing that. But right. um, Do you think he creates that pressure for himself because he says that stuff publicly? Well, he's, he's such an explosive running back, and I think guys really – or people, fans, and, and everyone just expect to see him go out there and break a big run, you know, and if that doesn't happen and we lose a game, you know, it's that kind of backfires if you make statements uh, prior to the season. But I still believe that he has the ability, he still has the drive, still has the want to, uh, for whatever reason, you know, it just didn't happen for him. And I, teams are going to be aware, you know, w- whenever we play against other teams, they're going to have their players they want to stop. And he's definitely one of those. So to, to be in the NFL and go against defenses week in and week out and you know that they're setting up game plans to stop you is going to be difficult. Now, you, you talked about the expectations of the defense, and you, you spoke a bit about the offense. But being in a 4-3 as, a, as, 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 as opposed to a 3-4, mm-hmm. how does that – because you – coming from Oakland, you mm-hmm. played in a different system, and you thrived under that system. Do you think the system that you were in with Tennessee kind of hampered your ability to get to the quarterback? Well, I think when you look at this year, there was supposed to be uh, some different packages where I would come in and, and kind of you know stand up and play that linebacker-type position that I had in the past. And, um, you know, as, as far as the, the 4-3 DN in my first year here, I think there was some adjustments and some learning. Uh, we weren't very good in a lot of phases. Like, we weren't good against the run, so you never really get an opportunity to pass rush when, exactly. you're, when you're trailing teams uh, the whole time. So they're going to start running early. Uh, this year I think we did a, a great job at that as far as, like, our – our run defense making improvements, we still aren't where we want to be, but I wasn't out there on the field as much as I thought I would be either, so it, it kind of it hampers that production as well. Cameron Wimley, take us into the locker room, or rather take our listeners into the locker room, especially during a season where there are things that don't go necessarily the way that you want them. Sometimes there's frustration. Sometimes there are things that go on between offenses and defense that are political, but yet still need to stay in-house. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you guys had a lot of things to contend with as that season progressed, you know, mm-hmm. not being where you wanted to be, but just kind of give us a little bit of an insight as to, you know, how you guys managed. Well, first off, you know, I think Coach Munchak did a great job with uh, tough situations when they came up. I think as a player, as a, as a veteran, you just basically have to go about doing your job. You know, you know, there's some things that you can't control, you can't worry about. And then, you know, if guys get discouraged and, you know, you start hearing some negative talk, you, 
you want to try to stop it. You know, you don't want guys to to kind of drag anybody else down on the team if things aren't going their way. Um, and and me, I feel like when I go to work, I'm there to do a job. So every time I go in, whether we win, lose, or whatever, I'm there to to work. You know, and I go in, I work out, I do what I'm supposed to do, I practice the way I'm supposed to practice, and then from you know from there you just let the coaches make their decisions you know and and I feel like we had um we had good coaches we had knowledgeable coaches uh I think coach Grant coach Williams uh put us in position to to make some big plays this year and we had players step up Jarrell Casey was one of them he had a breakout year this year uh adding Ropati and Sammy Hill to the lineup definitely helped um and Bernard in there kind of you know, gave us a spark to the the defense, um, and he's a vocal leader. So I think a lot of guys looked up to him and respected him. But I mean, basically, even in, in the locker room and out on the field, we all have to make sure we're all headed in the same direction. We can't have our own agenda. When you do that, if everybody's going one way and one guy's going another way, we're not gonna we're not gonna get very far. We all have to be pushing in the same direction. Now, Delaney Walker. He was on um, a radio row earlier, and he caused quite a stir with some of the things that he said. <laughs> now, uh, being a former uh, former guy that's been in the locker room, what if those things did happen? I'm not saying they did or they didn't. Uh, what did you guys do? Because you got a lot of veterans in that locker room, mm-hmm. including yourself. What what did you guys do to kind of you know squash all of the as you say the negativity and, and the guys that want to go against the grain? Well, I think on the team, the way I see it is the offense and the defense. You know, we spend our time over on our side of the ball. And, you know, even when we take our breaks, we take our breaks together. And you're broken down even even farther into segments. So as far as, like, the defensive line, I think everybody, we were all in, all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest of the defense, you know, I think everybody was – you know, in line with what the coaches wanted. For the most part, I don't think you're always going to agree. So, of course, you could have some arguments, some disagreements. But for the most part, I think we all came together. We all played as a team. So if he's speaking on, you know, any cancers, he may be speaking on his side of the ball, you know. And and for that, you know, I don't think necessarily a defensive player will go and call those guys out. They're together a lot. So, But we've had team meetings. We we talked about things. We, We, hey, the floor is open. Anybody want to discuss something? We've had players step up. Those those conversations they pretty much stay within within the team, you know. So when things pop up, you just got to handle it. We're all men in there. Um, like I said, everything's not going to be peaches and cream all the time. Um, I think for the most part, everybody did well. When things aren't going well, it's easy to get you know upset and and get feathers ruffled. And yeah. That probably did happen, you know, some this year. And, I mean, like I said, everybody wants to win. We're all competition addicts. But as far as cancers on our side of the ball, I don't really I don't really see it. Titans Cameron Wembley here at our table with us. If Ray Horton wants to turn this into a 3-4 defense right away, can you guys do that? I mean, you know, there's been mentions of maybe a hybrid. You go 3-4, 4-3. Where are you guys? Because you've seen both defenses. Mm-hmm. How quickly can the transformation be from a 4-3? And that's all we've ever seen since this franchise, this organization landed in Nashville. We've only seen a 4-3. How quickly can you make that transition to a 3-4? I think we have the pieces. I don't think it would be difficult to make that transition. Uh, I've got experience, of course, you know, standing up in a two-point and being down in a three-point, a key mares uh, as well. We got some some hogs on the inside. Sammy Hill got Rapati at the end, um, but but you never know. You never know how the, the lineup's going to look or the roster when we go back into the season. Uh, but as of right now, I think that that we could make that transition if we needed to. Cameron, you as a player, you can't do anything about what happens to coaches. I'm sure that Munch even shared that with you mm-hmm. uh, when the season came to an end last year. But you got to admit, a little bit of a surprise maybe that he's the offensive line coach now for the Steelers, especially a guy that came from the Houston lineage, you know, where the Steelers were the dreaded enemy for so many years. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Coach Munchak. He did a, a lot of the great things with the organization for for years. Um, at that one point, I thought he was going to be there, you know, just after the season, they kept him for a while. Mm-hmm. Then there was a story 
that he was going to be there. And then right afterwards, it was a story that he was released. So I think some people <laughs> that <laughs> Will got my guy Will Spoon yeah. here. But yeah. but, yeah, I think there were, there were some surprises uh, with that, or some people were surprised when he was released. Now, you, you've played both of these teams that are in the Super Bowl, the, the, the Seattle Seahawks as well as the Denver Broncos. What is the advantage or disadvantage that that Seattle might have over uh, over the, over the Denver Broncos? I think when you look at the defense, uh, Seattle they have some playmakers over there. Uh, I think uh, the secondary, uh, definitely with Sherman out there at corner, uh, they have some depth as far as their rushers. They got some uh, playmaking ability, pretty much at every position. Um, not to say that the Broncos don't either, but I think I would take Seattle's defense over the Broncos um, in this situation. Can you clear something up for us a little bit? We're all speculating because we weren't in the locker room as to where the emphasis was coming from on the defense. Now, I know all the assistants have positions, but when you've got a guy that's as, I guess you could say, as identifiable as a Greg Williams, mm-hmm. some people were thinking more of the emphasis came from him, but he wasn't the defensive coordinator by name. That was Jerry Gray's job. Mm-hmm. I know that he's now gone on to, to uh, St. Louis to be with Jeff Fisher. Mm-hmm. But just talk about where the influence was coming from and who you guys kind of gravitated towards, you know, when the charge was actually on, on hand. I think it was both of them, right. to be honest. You know, Greg worked with some players, and some may have, you know, had a, a better relationship or a better rapport with him. A lot of players talk with Coach Gray. Um, I think both of them are very knowledgeable uh, they work well together. You know, when we were out there, it's whoever, you know, whoever we're talking to, whoever's talking, that's who we're listening to. So I don't necessarily think that, you know, players were for Coach Gray or uh, players were for Coach Williams. I just think, you know, they, they work well together. We respected both of them. Last thing, you brought up Jarrell Casey. He did. He had a monster season. He says he wants to eventually break the record for sacks at that position. You've seen, you've played with players that were really, I believe you played with Seymour in, in Oakland. You've mm-hmm. seen guys that can dominate that position. What is his ceiling? How good can he be? Well, Case does some amazing things for a guy like his size, his height, and everything. I mean, it's, a, it's impressive. He's got great balance. He's really quick. I mean, he's, he's a good athlete. He's got good strength. But, I mean, his confidence, man, he, he's got swag. So he just feels like no matter who you put him up against, He's going to win, and, and like you said, going into the season, he actually had a, a car to Coach Keith Millard hanging in his locker, and he told him, <laughs> I'm going to break your record. You know, so, you know, he didn't quite get there, but he, he didn't end up, you know, in a bad position with, with 10 sacks, 10-plus sacks. So I, I think uh, he's got tremendous potential, and the sky's the limit for him. He did you, do, he did you go to Pasadena one. this year? I did. I was out there. Wow. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So what was that like? <laughs> That was a phenomenal experience, man, being a knoll and to see all those people out there and Garnet and Goal and uh, Coach Fisher getting his first championship after uh, replacing Coach Bowden. I think that was special. Wow. Hey, yeah. thanks for doing this. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy your visit. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Cameron Wembley here on Radio Row. We'll take a break and we'll be back.